So recently I did a video where I repasted my Falcon Northwest DLX personal laptop that I got so I could finally have just a non-gaudy gaming laptop that looks nice and is from a brand that has been around for decades. Not sponsored, the video wasn't sponsored about repasting, neither is this one. Uh, but they did reach out to me and they say, hey Jay, we saw you repasted and got some good uh, temperature results. Maybe we're, they're actually investigating now using KPX for their laptops too because of the fact that um, they use KPX already in their desktops. But they warned me, they said, hey, do us a favor, keep an eye on those memory temps. Because of the Clevo cooler that's built into these ODM laptops, there's so much variance in how twisted they may be or the kind of contact we might be getting. I might be having great GPU temps right now, but I might be murdering the memory. So now we're gonna do that and test that, which to be honest, I should have just done the first time. Hey, Day. Day. Mm. What? We got work to do. Yeah, I'm playing World of Warships. Yeah. World of Warships is the free to play naval strategy game where you command the most iconic and famous warships from World War I and World War II recreated with stunning detail and accuracy. Build your fleet while participating in various game types while upgrading your ship's arsenal along the way. New players who sign up using my link below will receive an exclusive starter pack to get you up and running quickly by receiving 7 days premium time, 1 million credits, 300 doubloons, and the tier 5 premium ship, the Exeter. So what are you guys waiting for? Start sinking ships with World of Warships by heading to the description below and getting your freebies. Okay, so for monitoring, you guys might remember last time we used their built-in, the built-in control center, which would show us, you know, our fan speed, and it would show us our clock speed and temperatures, and their GPU clock speed and temperature. And when it says off, it's because it switched to the Intel uh, internal graphics. Anyway, I don't even need this now, other than the fact that I have to recreate the testing scenario which I had before, which was lifted up the back of the PC. I don't know why. Only Asus came up with a somewhat similar design, which is when you open the lid with that, um, what was it, the start of the Z, Z Zephyr. Zephyr, yeah, the Zephyrus, Zephyrus laptop. When you opened it up, a kickstand came down to create, like it would lift it up off the table. And since all the cooling comes in from the bottom for the most part, um, I feel like laptops should have like, the, you know, keyboards have a little kick down, kick down feet. I think laptops need that just to get it up. So anyway, I'm using the power brick underneath it on the very back edge, so I'm not blocking any of the vents. Uh, and then also too, we had the fans set to maximum for the testing. I'm not gonna do that until I'm ready to start the test because they're very loud. Um, anyway, but because I use this and I always use hardware monitor, I couldn't see memory temps or hotspot temps. So it was important to be able to see those because I could have very good GPU temps but a hotspot temp on one part of the die maybe not getting good contact with the, the cold plate, which would mean then we're getting terrible um, throttling. Now the reason why I'm also checking this and it's in perfect timing with that email they sent me, while we were at LTX, I let my daughter play on this PC because she went with my wife and I to LTX and she was in the whale land area um, gaming on this. And I asked her how it was performing because I've been playing Diablo and stuff on it, but she played some other stuff. She said it was good, but there was some stuttering and some hiccups and it was like kind of pausing. And then, so I'm like, uh oh, maybe I should check those temps, right? Anyway, we can see those now. So with the free version of hardware monitor, you can see memory temp, hotspot temp and all that. And ironically on the pro trial, you can't. Pro tip, pro tip. Just get the free one. You can see everything you need and it doesn't expire or anything. So I don't know why they do that. Anyway, so memory's at 54C at idle, which is fairly warm, to be honest. So I'm already starting to get a little bit concerned that it may not be making good contact uh, with just having the thermal paste in between there. He was explaining to me, uh, the, the owner of Falcon Northwest was explaining to me that the type of pad that Clevo uses, who is the ODM for this laptop, uh, is a non-wet pad, if that makes sense. That's why it's not greasy. Um, it's more of a dry pad, but it is intended to squish and fill that gap. There's gaps that have to be filled. I was just hoping the thermal paste would be able to do that. But if thermal paste isn't compressed, it's not, it doesn't do a very good job of transferring. So if it's, if the memory temps are getting too hot, then I've got to go back into my drawer of thermal pads and try and find one that fits without lifting the cooler off the GPU die, which is what I was experiencing the first time I tried thermal pads. So with all that explanation said, here we go. I'm going to turn on the fans hundred percent, load it up with um, Port Royal looping like we did before. And we'll see if those temps get out of control. So I'm curious as to if we get a immediate temperature spike. So I said Port Royal, it's actually Speedway we were using, but I want to see if we get an immediate temperature spike on the memory. 60, 
68, 70, 72, I mean, 76. This is within operational attempts, but if anyone's ever dealt with the 40, 90, 40, 80 back mounted memory, you know it get, can get pretty warm. It is 80. Okay. I don't think our memory is being properly cooled. So what I want to see right now is our memory speeds. Our memory speeds right here are at 9,000 megahertz effective. Um, it's 82. They're not throttling, but this is still not ideal. Damn, I really wish I knew what the before temps were now. So I don't know what the max operational memory temp is, but I have to assume at some point, if this continues to climb, we're gonna drop down from 9,000. You know what I kind of want to do right now is I want to fire up Diablo 4 put it in a real gaming scenario. Okay, so I've got, I've had Diablo sitting here, Diablo 4, just chilling in Kovashad and Kiovashad, however it's pronounced. And then you can hear the system's clearly under load. But what's odd about this, look at the temps. GPU's lower, hotspot's lower. That makes sense on the GPU because this is not a ray tracing test and Speedway is. So any of the RT cores are sitting in here basically doing nothing. Now I do have DLSS enabled which is gonna be making those tensor cores do something. But look at the memory, it's at 80C, 78. It bounces between 78 and 80. So if this were a graph line, you'd see it be pretty flat. Um, that is already 14C lower than we saw on Speedway. So that means Speedway is definitely hitting the RAM in more ways than I realize. Which now means, I don't know why we were getting the hitching and stuttering at LTX, unless maybe that was just a network thing, because my daughter was playing online games, so I, unless, I've not, it could have also just been Diablo. It could have been Diablo, because I mean, the game is still new and there's still been some network stuff happening with the game and server issues. So it could have just been Diablo. I asked her if she's played other games and she was playing like Undertale. So games that wouldn't have like really shown any sort of temperature issues. But I'm now thinking maybe my thermal paste solution on the memory is fine. Now here's the other issue here. I got on the phone with Falcon Northwest because I needed some information on what am I seeing? Now, Hardware Monitor Pro might show me junction temp and edge temp and hotspot temp for um, the memory, which I can't see. This is just memory. So I don't know where that is that the hottest reported temp? Is this an average of temps? Because what we need to figure out now is am I, if I'm seeing an averaged or I'm just seeing one particular sensor that I can't see a hotspot, we might have one chip on here going really hot because if the, if the cold plate is twisted, and you can twist the chassis of a laptop, which is gonna move the cooler around too, is one of the main reasons why they were saying they believe Clevo uses those gap filling pads. Thermal pads are gap fillers, obviously, but they're much more flexible and, le and less um, liquidy based. They're much more dry. And it's designed to move around and flex with the laptop. So although their response to my video about repacing their laptop was like, hey, cool, repacing's good, you know, they repaced them too. I just went with KPX because I wanted to see if there'd be a difference and I did gain some. They explained to me and they leave those pads on the memory because they can't account for what would happen if you, know, if you have variants in the coolers and the thermal pace might be right, but over time and heat fluctuations and changes or just carrying it around and twisting it, am I gonna cause my, they're, they're concerned for the memory long-term. So they were kind of like, yeah, we're kind of interested to see how this works out for you, you know? So anyway, but you can see in games right now, at least gaming, whatever's being reported is good. So two things are gonna happen next. One, I'm gonna close Diablo because that's no longer like, the issue that we were experiencing with Diablo now cannot be explained with the cooler sol solution. I think I need to finally just buy Hardware Monitor Pro. I think that's gonna show me the temperatures that I need to see because um, I need to identify what is 78C. If 78C is just the average and I've got summer running a little lower and I've got one spot on one chip running 105 or whatever the, well 95 is the max operational temperature of the GDDR6, um, then that's a problem. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upgrade this to Pro. Then we're gonna go back into Speedway because that was the only test so far that of stuff loaded on this laptop that is gonna show us the max temperatures on memory and see what happens with Pro if I have more visibility on the sensors. Uh, pro tip, don't get Pro, because no, you can't see memory hotspot and stuff on it. It's the same, it's the exact same stuff that you can see in the free one. The difference is we have now logging, which will be helpful. We have logs, um, $24 a year. I mean, I have no problem supporting Harbor Monitor with some money, I've used it for years. But the Pro one, they need to work on giving you some more Pro stuff. Make a graph, let's draw a graph or something. <laughs>
Moving on, I wanna know what's gonna happen. It's clearly gonna hit the operational max temp of 95C. This room is far too cool. This laptop's airflow is far too good and the temps are far too high to not hit it. If I were to turn off the AC in this room and take away that brick and let it sit flat on the table, we would definitely see those temps come up faster. Um, the memory is already at 82, 84. So clearly Speedway does its thing, but finding out that the max operational temperature was 95 and then whatever we find out what the TJ max is, I need to find out what's gonna happen. Is the memory clock gonna drop down or are we gonna see the GPU slow down? I don't know, to be honest. But we're already 86, 88. It's already hit 90 for a second, as you can see. There's 90. We won't have to wait long to find out. So it's uh, at 98C, and then it bounces off 100 every now and then. But I've been watching, and it's been running for like an hour now, by the way. We are plenty heat soaked. The GPU core temps are pretty much exactly where we expected them to be. But most importantly, the GPU frequencies are not suffering. So we were trying to figure out what would happen once it hits those max temperatures, what, what, what's going to adjust to keep it from overheating. The memory has never dropped down. It has stayed at 9001 the entire time. And the, the graphics, as you can see, is bouncing between the 20, low 2200s and then hitting 2400 between when it's loading scenes. This is where the frequency has always been. So we did find out the spec sheet says 95C. That might be for G, like desktop GPUs. The memory might be a little different in the laptops Maybe just because they know they get hotter, I don't know. But at 100C, we're not seeing anything slow down. I also know in talking with Falcon Northwest that they've had these conversations with NVIDIA and has been basically explicitly stated that these are the targets that's designed to run this hot. And we know that, but we don't have to like that. Anyway, I don't think I need to take it apart and repaste it, but I'm gonna take it apart anyway because I am 100% curious now as to how much that thermal paste has spread on the ramp. If it still looks like a dollop when I take it off and it doesn't look like it has spread, you know, it's blue, it's easy to see, then we'll know that there may have been some hotter parts of the ramp. And so what I plan on doing is this is actually an old Vega, Vega block, uh, EK water blocks for Vega. I have these pre-cut ram chip half mil super thin thermal pads. And what they used, what, what EK used to recommend back in the day was actually putting the thermal pad on the chip and then a drop of thermal paste on top of each pad. So I'm gonna try that next. I'm gonna put these pads on each one. I would love to try it with just the pad, but I'm, I'm not comfortable with that. I'm gonna do pad and thermal paste, let it do its thing, and then we'll check the temps and that's probably where we'll end up leaving it. But there's been a lot of discovery about just some of the inconsistencies on the cooler that Clevo uses and their own installation process and where the screws and stuff are that that thick clay pad that they use is honestly just a lazy fix for some manufacturing tolerance problems. Oh yeah, see, look at that. There is, there is no spread on the memory. So this is, this is kind of a good thing. We obviously had really good, look at the GPU. The GPU spread is like, it's like a perfect, that was perfect. But of course, cause nothing on the RAM was, there was no spread at all. Okay, so I'm glad I did this. I, I remember how I just said I didn't feel like I needed to, I'm glad I did. Let me clean this all up and then I'll, I'll put the thermal pad on there and then the drop of thermal paste on the thermal pads. You guys can see what that looks like. This might look really weird to some of you, but like I said, this was actually the way it was just like, EK Waterblocks used to show this in their manual. I wish I had one of those manuals on hand. Anyway, I'm gonna spread the thermal paste on the dies now, get that back together. Okay, Phil can put up a split screen, but this is already like 10C cooler for RAM. You see it jumping up between 42 and 48, there's 44. It was in the 50s, 52, 54 before. So we're like eight to 10C colder already just in the, I, like booting up the system. Oh, there's a 50 right there. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and start with Diablo. We'll start with Diablo because of the fact that we know um, that the temps were much cooler in Diablo. So if we see a hot temp in Diablo, then we're gonna know, okay, now, see my, my concern, I can't imagine that super thin half mil pad I put on there now would cause enough of a gap to where it will know, like, we're not making good contact on the GPU. Because my concern is now, did that, mil, did that half mil pad now push the cooler off the GPU some? I think we're making good contact though, because I did see 
some of the thermal paste I put on the, uh, on the thermal pads for the RAM squish out the side slightly. So that tells me we got contact for sure. Is it, and, and thermal paste, as you guys know, a half mil can make all the difference between contact or not. So anyway, here we go. Let's see. It's been running for a while now, 64, 66. It's dropped down to 62 at one point. When I walked over here, it was at 62. But look at our GPU temps, they're still fantastic. 59 degrees on the GPU, 64 to 64 and a half on the hotspot. It spiked at 70. And we're seeing the temps come down from where the spikes are only because the new thermal paste has started to spread and as it gets hot, it really starts to fill in those, those gaps, right? As it thins out. I think the same thing is happening for the memory, which is why we're seeing the memory cool off. We have dropped what, 12C on the memory so far. But that's only half of it. Oh, look at the graphics core. Locked at 2400. I think it was locked before, honestly, with Java. It's just not, in this particular laptop config, it's not hard to run. Okay, Diablo, that's cool and all. Is Speedway going to bring it to its knees or to its hinges? Yeah, look at that hotspot. 102.6 where it was a second ago. Our memory has come down quite a bit. 12 degrees, it hit 90 for a second, but it's the thin, that pad is so thin. That means the gap we're dealing with here, it could honestly just be one part of the cooler that's slightly higher than the rest, which is lifting the whole thing up canter. So all we did now was now screw our GPU temps back up. Dang. Okay, so I've already had the conversation with Falcon Northwest. They're gonna send me the appropriate clay pads that were intended to be in there all along because they're designed to squish and fill that gap and they will perfectly squish to whatever the gap is. It's like, I wish I could get, I could, with those I'll probably get the better memory temps like I'm getting now, again, 12C colder. With, and you know what's funny is, I mean, we've dropped quite a bit. Look at that, we're down to 2055. 2040, 2025, that's, that's way down from where it was. So all I did was move the temperatures back to the GPU, because now the GPU is not getting, so if I were to take that cooler apart again, it'd be like the first time you guys saw where it was too hot in the first video, where it wasn't fully squished out. Back to that, I, I'm just shocked that the cooler from Clevo is that uneven, if you will that 0.5 millimeters is the difference between throttling and fantastic temperatures for the GPU or terrible temperatures for the GPU and great temps for the memory. I guess there's a reason why Clevo uses that clay squishy pad. Okay, well, that's where we're gonna leave it. I mean, there's no, there's no reason to follow this up because of the fact that I already know what I need to do right now is I need to take it back apart because I'm gonna be heading to Indianapolis. I will already have been there probably by the time you guys see this video and I want to play Diablo in the hotel room, okay? And I can't do that. In, well, I can do that in its current state. You guys saw the temperatures, it'd be fine. But I'm not okay with these, uh, these temps as they are. Obviously 103.8 C, that's the that hot spots above safe. <laughs> Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, it's my recommendation. Just don't, don't screw around with your laptops. Just leave them alone.